Hi. So, I want to talk about a TV series I've just seen. Now, you can probably find better reviews of this other places, because, like I said, my camera is crappy, and I don't know how to cut in little still images from the show and other fancy things. So, it will just be me talking to the screen and waving the cover around. But, it is what it is, and I wanted to talk about it. And the TV series I'm talking about is The River, and this is season 1. Now, I don't know if there will be a season 2. I tried to read up about it on the internet, and it doesn't say that the series is finished, but it doesn't say it has a new season is under production either. So I don't know. I hope there will be another one, because it's a pretty good series. Now, what this is, is that it is a Blair Witch Project type found footage style show, but it is a whole TV series instead of being just a movie. So, the basic premise is that you have this, uh, this uh, nature documentary, uh, produ uh, the, the nature documentary star, who has gone with his team deep into the Amazonas to, um, and then he's vanished. And a year after he's vanished, or was it six months? A while after he vanished, he has uh, been declared legally dead. But suddenly he's located the beacon, or something like that, some sort of safety device that will emit an, an emergency frequency uh, has turned on, so they somebody ha must have turned his equipment on. So, uh, a TV producer talks the man's wife son and son into going uh, and look for him. And when I get there, they find that the beacon is from a uh, hidden part of the uh, Amazons, where there shouldn't be a river, but there are. And they go there, and they meet a lot of supernatural things. And it appears that this, um, this um, nature documentary guy, his catchphrase was always, there's magic out there, and apparently has found real magic. So, the episodes usually means the crew finds some clue about where this guy is, and they meet some uh, horrid monstrosity that they have to find a way to get rid of or run away from, and it, yeah. So you can say that this show is like if you take the Blairish Project, X-Files, and Lost, and you put this in a bowl to stew, then you put all the characters on the boat. So, yeah. So, there's some good things about this show, and some bad things about the show. Let me start with the bad. One of the things that bothered me a little bit in the beginning is that the nature documentary guy, his name is Emmett Cole, and he is so completely and utterly based on Steve Irving, the crocodile hunter. He goes around the filming nature, getting um, up and close to dangerous animals with his, his wife and child. It is so clearly based on Steve Irving and basing a vanished, possibly dead a horror character on a actually dead TV celebrity that it doesn't sit completely right with me. Another problem this TV series uh, have is that they are in Brazil, but everybody speaks Spanish. And, yeah, they don't speak Spanish, they speak Portuguese. So, yeah. A little bit more research there, people. Other than that, the good episode in this series is really good. 
But there are also some filler episodes. And um, in a TV series that is, the, at least this first season, is only eight episodes, there shouldn't be any filler episodes at all. So at times it seems to lose its way. Other than that, I really like the series. So, yeah. You have a good cast of characters. Not too many, and not too few. The characters are interesting, they have their own secrets, their own... So you get the drama, you get the mysterious characters, and so on. I like the myths and legends they have, uh, the monsters they explore, and so on. And many of them are actually based on various legends in the Amazons, which are very interesting. Uh, the filming is interesting, and I also like it because it's different. I have I don't know of any other found footage type uh, TV shows. There might be, but I haven't heard about them. So at least for me, it is very new, and that is interesting. Now. I don't think this is a particularly scary show. There are a little bit of gore, but not a lot. It is marketed as horror, but I would think it's more mystery. Mystery and adventure. There are a few episodes where you can say there are some horror involved, but mystery and adventure. So, I also like that the ending of the season is... Uh, you're definitely stoked for a new season because they do end off where it's very easy to make a sequel but at the same time they do wrap the main plot lines up so you feel that you've gotten an ending so if they don't get a new season you, s you still feel that you've gotten a complete story and I think that since this uh, series is only eight episodes it doesn't it's not a huge investment of time to uh, sit down and start watching it, and since it's also a very short it's, uh, season, it's not very expensive, so you can do it pretty easily as well. Uh, I'm not a big expert when it comes to picture and sound quality and so on, but for me it looked pretty okay. There are some good extras in here, most of them of the uh, making of type, but I think they were interesting. So, yeah. Except, uh, the problems with this show do pull it down a little bit, and there are some episodes that drags a bit, which goes over into B-horror territory and doesn't really follow the feel of the rest of the show, but the good episodes are very good. So, I do recommend it. I also like that I have this crating for the discs because then the discs are more protected and easier to uh, easier to um, uh, flip to and find the right one. And of course, since there's only eight uh, episodes, there are only two discs. One thing I definitely do not like is that there are a crap ton of trailers at the beginning of these discs and a lot of that sort of cap and you can't just press the menu button, you have to sit through them you can skip through them, but there are a lot of them so you sit skip, skip, skip and you have to do that every time you put a disc in and it's for both the discs and that gets annoying. Please, when you're making, when you're having trailers, make them, make it possible to just press the menu button. Because I often like to see the trailers, but when I feel that they are forced on me, then I just get annoyed, and it actually reduces the chance that I'll buy those movies or TV shows. So yeah, all in all, I really liked the river. I think it was a good purchase, and I just wanted to mention it. It's a different horror show. It has interesting creatures, interesting characters, a good plot, and um, a good feel for the show. 
So yeah. It has its flaws, but are generally quite good. And that is my little review of the river. And it seems like it's ABC who has made it. I, I'm completely oblivious about all sorts of things like that. I see a oh, horror show. Uh, who's made it? I don't know. <laughs> it's because, and that's probably why I will never be a very good movie reviewer <laughs> because. Even if I should manage to get a better camera and learn some skills and that, because the actors' names, um, yeah, the company that made it, um, yes, because for me, I'm really only interested in the story in the show itself and the monster effects and so on. I don't really care who made it, and I always see the characters, not the actors. So I think I've never bought a movie because of an actor in it. There are actors I like better than others, but it's the stories and the characters I see, not the people behind it. So yeah. Anyway, I have been babbling enough. Watch this one. It's good. Have a great day.